Greetings agents, today's anomaly came to light during the exploration of SCP-1913, The Furies. The documents appear to be a collection of interconnected logs that make numerous references to Foundation personnel. This entry chronicles the fate of a former agent who, unknowingly, was far more entangled with the anomalous world than anyone could have suspected. The Prometheus Foundation, a defunct rival organization, dedicated to anomalous research, emerges as a key player in this particular anomaly. Warning: Be advised that portions of the entry delve into disturbing topics involving physical and mental suffering. Item number SCP-2792 Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class 1. Dark Risk Class 2. Caution Assigned Site Site 45 Site Director Research Head Assigned Task Force Special Containment Procedures SCP-2792 is to be contained in Secure Holding Cell 368, SHC-368, on Site 45-C. SHC-368 has been modified to tolerate a minimum internal temperature of minus 225 degrees Celsius. Equipment and luxuries expected to interact with SCP-2792 must also be equipped to survive these conditions. SHC-368 must be equipped with high-capacity heating vents to counteract extreme cold in the case of an emergency or emotional instability. All personnel entering SHC-368 are to wear at least Class A insulated environmental suits. If for any reason SCP-2792 leaves itself, all Site-45-C personnel must vacate to either Site-45-A or Site-45-B. In accordance with Hayward Protocol, SCP-2792 is allowed counseling every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Description SCP-2792 is the collective term for SCP-2792-1 and SCP-2792-2. SCP-2792-1 is a white rabbit doll with red hands and legs, black button eyes, and gauze cloth wrapped around its head, neck, and wrists. It is composed primarily of polyester cotton and has a core temperature of approximately minus 210 degrees Celsius. With SCP-2792-2 inhabiting it, SCP-2792-1 is capable of movements at speeds averaging 4 km per hour. The temperature surrounding SCP-2792 is lower to an extreme degree, reaching minus 45 degrees Celsius on average but this does not come from SCP-2792-1 directly. If left uncontained, the weather within a 72 km radius will be similarly altered, often causing blizzards or extreme snowfall conditions. SCP-2792 is capable of consciously lowering the surrounding temperature further, but it's unable to raise it past minus 21 degrees Celsius. SCP-2792 has a record of minus 201 degrees Celsius for a duration of 1 hour and 23 minutes. If not focusing on maintaining its effects, the temperature will return to minus 45 degrees Celsius. SCP-2792-2 is former agent Sarah Crowley. SCP-2792-2 is 197 centimeters tall, suffering from stage 1 SCP-1903 infection, and has become a semicorporeal entity. A foundation coined term used to describe objects entities, etc., which are not composed of matter and can pass through solid objects, yet can still physically interact or someone interact with corporeal objects as if they were corporeal. Despite this, SCP-2792-2 exhibits greater strength than the formerly observed in Agent Crowley. Before the signation, Agent Sarah Crowley died while exploring SCP-1619. SCP-2792-2 is capable of inhabiting SCP-2792-1 and controlling it as if it were a body. SCP-2792 instances cannot be further than 5 meters away from each other. If moved away from SCP-2792-1, SCP-2792-2 will disappear and will reappear inhabiting SCP-2792-1. SCP-2792 
has a known connection to a Brutus class Demiurge entity known as Sari, who originated and died in SCP-2746. Agent Sarah Crowley, SCP-2782, and Sari are expected to have been the same person at different points in time. SCP-2782's effect on the surrounding temperature is suspected to be related to Sari, who was often associated with harsh blizzards in SCP-2746. Addendum 2792-1 SCP-2782 was found on December 20th, 20, in the Mojave Desert, unintentionally causing a large-scale ground blizzard. Information on this event could not be concealed in time due to the resulting blizzard reaching Las Vegas, but ties to SCP-2072 or any Foundation involvement were successfully contained. Currently, the blizzard has been publicly labeled as a freak weather event. SCP-2072 was found near a previously airtight case produced by Prometheus Labs, which SCP-2072 broke while trying to free itself. Forward 2792 The following is a collection of logs and interviews pertaining to SCP-2072's time spent with Prometheus Lab, as well as recovered documentation from Prometheus Labs. Due to SCP-2072's history with the Foundation, other SCP files may be referenced. These documents are provided under jurisdiction of Hayward Protocol and may only be viewed by Site-45 psychiatric staff, staff with a specialized 2792 clearance, and the current Site-45 administrator and those with O5 designations. Interview 2792-0 Interviewed SCP-2792, referenced as Sarah. Interviewer, Doctor. Forward. This interview took place after SCP-2792's identity as Agent Sarah Crowley was confirmed to be true. Days after containment, Doctor was chosen because of their friendly relationships to SCP-2792 while it was employed by the Foundation. SCP-2792 was referred to as Sarah by Doctor over the course of this interview. Begin, though. Well, hello, Sarah. Sarah? Not SCP whatever my number is? I take it you found better evidence than just how I know why there was a fish ship then in the ladies locker room. Yeah, we did. And yes, you and Stuart. <laughs> I can't believe you know that after all these years. I think it was when I was drunk of my during the Halloween party years ago. Who told you that? Well, it was pretty memorable, don't you think? We still have that huge stand you left in one of the lockers to admire. Wait, seriously? It's been decades. Is it still working? Miraculously. Damn. Well, at least they replaced the sinks. Yeah, well, it's good to know you're making light of all this. A good sign that you're recovering. Do you think you're ready to talk about your time at Prometheus? I, uh, I can try. Can't you just, I don't know, go to Prometheus medical records? We can, and we are. But the most we're getting out of this is this Dr. Alba's personal notes. You really want their notes to be the only input we have on what happened? Besides, it's good for you to vent. I guess. But first, I heard something about Hayward Protocol? Could you tell me what that is? What does it have to do with Stuart? If I tell you, will you stop stalling? Yes. It guarantees safe and comfortable conditions for well-behaved, sapient skips. Mostly patient-doctor confidentiality, counseling, sources of entertainment, that kind of thing. Stuart was able to get it passed for Site 45 while he was an admin. Oh, that's nice. Do you think I could see him? I'll put a word in. You... You'll put a word in? Seriously? It's been God knows how long. And all you're gonna do is put a word in? <sighs> Thanks. It's the most I can do. I'm not even sure if it's okay to be discussing this. Why wouldn't it be okay to talk about him? Did something happen to him? What's going on? No, no, it's just... Red tape. Sure. 
So, what happened at Prometheus? Dr. Alba's sadistic is what happened. They had a problem with me from day one. I didn't even know them, but apparently the quack knew me. I'm just... That drugged me. A lot. Is that good enough for you? Did they hurt you? Physically? Pauses. SCP-2792 becomes visibly upset as the room temperatures begins to drop. As a matter of fact, yes. Yes, they did. Listen, can we stop? I don't want to talk about them. We do need to talk about this sometime. You don't think I know that? I said I don't want to talk about them now. Jesus! What do I gotta say to get your fat face to shut up? You wanna talk? How about you start by cutting the about Stuart, huh? Look, can you just... Off? I'm not in the mood to deal with this sh Sure thing, Sarah. Exhales. Temperature begins to rise to average levels. Sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'll talk about it. Just... Not now. If you give me a copy of whatever, I'll add to it or verify it or whatever. I don't think I'm capable of talking right now. I understand. I'll just show myself out. Just remember to take care of yourself. In low. Closing statement. Once doctor left SHC-368, the temperature lowered to an extreme degree. SCP-2792 moved itself to its bed and placed itself under the covers and against the wall for two minutes after the interview. Initial assessment, 2792-1. Initial assessment, Crafter-004. Patient name, Crowley Sarah. Number 4, sorry. ID 10009856343463467467464 Date March 27th 1960 Time 18:45 hours History Sarah Crowley is a former crafter number 4 sorry and a former SCP Foundation agent between her and Stuart Hayward. Number three, Sugward, her partner. She was the first to die and inherited an artificial body. No, said body is a doll that has been designed by administrator Agatha White. Sarah has shown phenomenal strength and vitality while human, which is expected to return in her secondary presence. Status, patient has become very weak as a result of the doll she is bound to. However, her secondary presence is expected to surpass her former faculties and reach post-war crafter level after her planned treatment. Her recovery is showing promise. The temperature around the patient lowers over time. This effect is expected to increase as she recovers and becomes more like her original form. This is a reflection of her role and status in Instructions, Recommendations, Plan the doll the patient is bound to has been designed to simulate the effects of foreign agents once they have been intentionally injected into its core. The goal of the patient's care is to make her stay seem as quick and painless as possible via regularly administered sleep aids, while encouraging a steady recovery of her secondary presence. It has also been treated to increase durability so that the patient will not have to self-repair post-recovery. Patient's stay is to last until her partner, Stuart Hayward, number three, Stuart, current human presence expires. No further action will be taken on behalf of Prometheus Labs to accelerate or delay his arrival. Patient will remain in the care of Dr. Alba and their team until then. Document 2792-2 Note, the following are samples of the notes left behind in Dr. Alba's computer. Most of the notes were held in encrypted files held alongside copies of SCP-2792's prescription notes. March 27, 1916 I'm not sure how to process this. I joined this place to redeem myself in the eyes of my partner. I never imagined after putting in all this work into showing him I'm a changed person, this despot would fall right into my lap. I almost couldn't hide my disgust. 
when Nagata tasked me with showing her even a fraction of the civility I showed to those back home. Why didn't I speak up? I wanted to get kicked off of this assignment. Whatever. I'll see if I can lock this off onto someone else. March 28, 1916 Miss White's debrief on what she once done was finally delivered. I knew we'd have some conflicts of interest, but I didn't expect them to be so easy to deal with. All she wants is time to pass quickly for the patient. How long does she think it'll take for Sewer to die? I suppose it doesn't matter. This is easy to work with. I told her I can put her to rest until it's time for her to wake up. Should be painless. Lucky. I wish I could just lie around and sleep all day. April 7th, 1960. It's been a little over a week with this assignment. My mind keeps going back to a few days ago, where I had a little more fun with it than I was probably allowed. The patient was lying there as usual and it was time for me to switch her bags and whatnot. She's been making it cold in here, and I was more preoccupied on that than what I was doing. I tried throwing a blanket over her, but it didn't work like I hoped. I remembered how cold it was, how cold she made it eons ago. Then I hit her, and then I kept hitting her. I knew she couldn't feel it, on account of the drugs. Probably didn't even care. But I did. I felt better. I almost forgot I could get fired for doing that. In hindsight, though, I could technically do that again. I mean, there's only surveillance in the halls, not of her actual room. I technically could go in there when I'm supposed to, do my... and clock her one when no one's looking. I could keep doing this every day if I wanted. Hell, she deserves worse. But there's not much of a point if she can't feel it. Outside of just mental Easter? I might do it every once in a while. Call it stress relief. April 8, 1960. What if I just made up a reason to prescribe her the Trodoxin? The Trodoxin is a type of neurotoxin found in several aquatic animals. And then only administer that in terms of sleep aid. I'm only really worried about the others. If they see me, they could get me fired. I only do it at night, when they're out of the building. I know just the perfect strain that would paralyze her in such a way that she'd seem asleep, but really be just as awake and feeling everything. Not like that can die this time. <laughs> 